Join me as I dive into the data on the popular longevity supplement spermidine and find out why I've started to take it. Spermidine is a naturally occurring compound classified as a polyamine, which is found in all living things from bacteria to humans. But it's been gaining a lot of popularity because of some uh, animal studies showing that in mice in particular, it can increase lifespan by an impressive 10%. It's been shown to induce autophagy, reduce inflammation and improve mitochondrial function. And for example, in mouse experiments, when they knock out the genes related to autophagy, spermidine no longer has that positive longevity effect, so it clearly does work. But then on the flip side, some studies suggest it's very context specific, you know, say depending on where that, uh, how old that mouse was, its overall health when starting spermidine, also the bioavailability of taking a supplement. And this is something I'll get into when discussing my own dosing protocols, you know, the difference between naturally derived spermidine and spermidine hydrochloride. So let's talk about some of the potential benefits. There is some evidence supporting that it can reduce cancer risk by, as I mentioned, inducing autophagy, you know, improving cellular health, reducing oxidative stress, improving the immune system as well. But then there's certainly nuance here as well because polyamines like spermidine are essential for tumor growth. So that's where you have to be careful about mega dosing something like spermidine. It also supports neuroprotection by reducing inflammation in those neurons as well as, of course, autophagy, but also uh, preventing the aggregation of protein buildup in the brain, you know, a hallmark of Alzheimer's. Studies in humans and mice have shown that spermidine can improve heart health by reducing arterial stiffness, you know, lowering blood pressure and improving endothelial function. As I highlighted earlier, the longevity benefits of spermidine seem to have some context to it. So why have I started taking it? Well, I did a metabolite test back in October and my spermidine levels were in the monitor range, towards the higher end of it at 2.28 micromolar. And I do get a reasonable amount from my diet, in particular from mushrooms. They by far have the most spermidine out of like general food. I mean, wheat germ is another one, but uh, as actual kind of general food, mushrooms seems to be the highest. So by getting my spermidine into the optimal range, I think this could have an anti-inflammatory effect for myself. And this is a weak area of mine for C-reactive protein, which is it's been going up. I believe it's mostly down to uh, um, soft tissue inflammation from weight training, exercise in general, and there may be some like heavy metals maybe getting into my body without realizing. So all these little things can uh, drive up C-reactive protein. But on the other hand, my IL-6, that has been going down substantially. So it's just some weak areas in my inflammation. And there's a couple of pro-inflammatory cytokines that spermidine can help with, uh, TNF-alpha and IL-1-beta. And of course, by enhancing autophagy, then you're reducing the activation of inflammasomes, so, uh, which are responsible for making IL-1-beta. But also spermidine inhibits NF-kappa-B signaling, so this pathway is responsible for um, transcription and production of these uh, inflammatory cytokines, I just mentioned IL-1-beta and TNF-alpha. It goes even further still with spermidine as it can influence epigenetic modulation, in particular histone acetylation in those pro-inflammatory pro cytokine genes, uh, TNF-alpha and IL-1-beta. So I get my spermidine from Time Health. I've been buying their products for four years now. They're really high quality, but very good value for money at the same time. I get their Renew version, which has 6.5 milligrams of uh, spermidine hydrochloride. They also have another version with also uh, wheat germ as well, because uh, there, there's some evidence that it might be more bioavailable when it comes from that source. But it's a mixture of both of them, that one. And there, there are other supplements out there that cost a lot more money just purely from wheat germ. And typically, you, know, you can't really get above uh, one milligram a pill with that because you know, you're getting it in that quantity. And yeah, there is obviously a lot more evidence when you look at epidemiological studies on just dietary spermidine that uh, obviously that is... Uh, you know, it has a lot of health benefits, but then certainly in animal models, uh, you know, when they've given them uh, spermidine hydrochloride, it does have an impact on their longevity. And there has been evidence that, you know, it does in increase the uh, metabolite level of spermidine as well. I myself, I'm doing spermidine just three days a week as my levels, they weren't too far outside the optimal range. And I'm trying to eat more spermidine from diet, in particular things like shiitake mushrooms. I get them in dried in bulk, so it, it doesn't actually cost that much money.
So if you've got any feedback with spermidine, if you've been measuring your levels or if you've noticed it reducing your inflammation, then please do comment down below. And if you like that, then check out this video here on calcium alpha ketoglutarate, another popular longevity supplement that can help with um, senescence as well, like the pro-inflammatory cytokines coming from senescent cells. Thank you for watching. See you next time.